Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and I am back with another Walking Dead reaction. We are on season eight, episode five already, which is entitled The Big Scary You. Well, I don't think I'm that frightening, but so this the last episode that we watched was a pretty sad episode. Um considering that the first couple of episodes were kind of showing how Rick and the, his group were kind of winning the assault on the saviors and on the sanctuary. Uh, they basically at that point had been suffering very little losses, very little um, casualties, and it seemed like the plan that they'd come up with was pretty brilliant because, like I said, they weren't losing a lot of people, they were getting Negan's people where they wanted them, and they were, you know, getting things like guns and supplies. But finally we went to Ezekiel's group last week. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we had Ezekiel kind of go through this whole thing. There was the whole weird random savior who looked like Bubbles from Trailer Park Guy. He was just antagonizing him the entire time about him being a phony and a fake and does he really have the right to be king over these people. So, um, yeah, it was just a really sad episode. You know, we lost a bunch of people from Kingdom. I mean, the sad reality is we didn't know most of them, but still, it kind of sucked that Ezekiel had to return back to uh, the Kingdom with Carol and Jerry. Like, out of all those people, two people survived, and, you know, that's going to be a really rough... It's going to be a rough time. I think we're going to see Ezekiel reeling from this for a little while because he's always been very optimistic, but he's never had to take his people to war like this. So um, the loss of those people, not to mention Shiva, like I, I've never been so affected by a fake cart, a fake uh, cat's life in my entire life. Like it's, wow, it, it, it hit me. It hit me hard, guys. Anyways, enough chatting from me. Let's watch the episode and then we'll talk about it after. Enjoy. Boop. And what I ask for, after you have given me so much, is purpose. So we all need life, Father Gabe. Gregory. Picture made from scratch by yours truly. I use genuine hilltop sorghum. Nailed it myself. How many times am I gonna say sorghum in this show? <laughs> Seriously. Uh huh. Today's the day, Gregory. You fill your belly up with my love, and then you solve it. Am I the only one who just feels like that sounds really wrong? But not for nothing, those pancakes do look fairly perfect. Well, I, uh, Negan, I don't like killing people any more than you do. I like killing people. I was about to say. Oh, well, I said we save people. Hmm. Let's. That's why you're called the, the savior. Oh my God, Greg. <laughs> wow. You don't want to hear this? No one wants to hear don't this. Don't need to. <laughs> Be gone, minion. If indeed you have always been the guy, hmm. And why the hell didn't you know about the widow leading an army of your people straight up my ass in Alexandria? Right? Mmm. Answer me that. Riddle me that, Greg. I think you are a thin-dicked politician threading the needle with your thin, thin dick. <laughs> now, is listening to you... I, I didn't know until I... I knew. Gregory. You're stuttering, Brett. If we go in with the right stage picture, a thick and veiny show of force surrounding Gregory, when he Why lays do down think... the law, I think things go back to copacetic. Why Let's all the references down. to phalluses? We'll I don't get it. Place. Let's get you properly on your ass. I don't need your hand, sir. You can keep that. Friend Rick is an asshole. No! Oh, really? You're an asshole. Thank you! Thank you, Father yeah. Gabe. But he's gonna get people killed. Cause you don't kill people. Ever. By you. Why would you stop for that bearded prick? Question you've been asking for like two weeks now, Bray. I think I'm here to take your confession. Good news is that Father Gabriel probably managed to actually creep Negan out. For real. 
I don't have shit to confess. You sure? Except maybe the fact that I rubbed one out right where you're sitting was just to calm down a bit. Oh, come on! Uh, he's probably not joking. How do you help you me? You want to know why people are going to start dying in there? Because I'm not there to stop it. That is a twisted truth about the sanctuary. Let's put you out there, Eugene. Maybe it would motivate the answer man to come up with a solution. I don't really think Regina, zombies eat mullets. He's right. And I don't want to hear backbiting or pissing or moaning from you two. You got a problem with that come at me. Hmm? Look at you the brass pair that Dwight here, just dropped. Doing my level best to stay fully on the DL, but sometimes the mouth brain neuronal connection experiences a misfire and foot bed mouth at an unavoidable velocity. <laughs> You're right. Eugene, there. I have missed you. If you didn't say it, I would have. Is it? You killed my people while they were sleeping. Well, look at you swinging your dick. Like, you can almost count how long it's going to take yeah. before Negan's going to say the word dick in every That's episode. Wrong. Carl told us about your wives women pressure into marrying you? Gabe, you're triggering. Triggered. Oh, okay, that's leaking fuel. That can't be good. We can use these now. What? Think about it. There ain't no kingdom no more. Yeah. We know what we gotta do. But you're not. You ain't doing this. Rebellion? There's a plan, and everyone's sticking to it. Not everyone. Ooh. So, Negan and that other group? This is on them. If people die, it's their fault. Not and now Daryl sounds Can't exactly the way Negan does. We've got our own people to look after. Not doing this. Hey. Is I'm there gonna be a Daryl Rick fight? Oh, snap! Send your troll. Uh-oh. Activated. Murder Rick activated. What the hell, Daryl? Oh, no, you didn't. <gasps> Dynamite, guys, go! Run! Run! Jesus. Stupid little play fight, and now nobody has guns or dynamite. Good job, boys. They're so lucky Michelle's not there. I hate your face, but do you want to ride with me? That's just cold, man. But Daryl needs to cool off. I've killed before, but that's not my gravest sin. You tell. No. My only real wife. Till death did us part. before this I lied to her I screwed around on her not surprising too hot down there and we sure as hell ain't going outside when you gonna fix the power it doesn't need fix it Gun! <laughs> I am Negan anyone else want a bullet anyone good here we're good no one of our own did this, is doing this, right now. Tell me how we find him, Simon. We... Simon said? ...find when the minute is missing. Through that, we get an idea of the how, which hopefully leads us right to who. But we start with when. Eugene? You did not! Huh. Is that Chopper? No. Who is that? Who's got a chopper? What? Uh oh. Dr. Smarty Pants. Game face. Game face, Eugene. Oh my god, who's watching Rick? Who's watching Rick?
Are these Negan's people? Negan has helicopters? <gasps> was Gabriel bit? No. So yes, uh, that was uh, episode five, which was named The Big Scary You which apparently refers to the unknown. Thank you, Gregory, for that insight. Um, this is an interesting episode, I guess. I'm trying to think of uh, my bearings here. We got a lot. This was like a Negan episode, which I suppose we needed to have at some point. Uh, but we definitely saw more of a focus on him and his background and kind of what makes him tick. And having Father Gabriel be the person to dig that out was, um, that was very interesting. But let's just, let's go back and just kind of recap through the notes that I made here because there was quite a few little, little things that I noticed. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting in the beginning with the whole conversation between Gregory and the Council of Negan, I guess, um, where he, like, I don't know if Gregory really is that dense. Like, I'd like to think that he's maybe just playing dumb a lot of the time, but I really start to think he really is so dense that he didn't recognize that when Negan said, hey, get your people in line, he wasn't talking about, oh, tell them they're gonna have to go have a timeout, Greg. No, Negan was like, tell them they get on ship or they, they die. You know, they're going overboard. There's none of this exile crap. He was like, I'm not looking to make friends. As he said, we, we need people, but you know, as Negan has already discovered, fear is a very, very strong motivator to get people in line. And that's kind of what he was expecting from Greg. But we already know that Gregory is like the biggest wimp in the world and uh, that he wouldn't have had the heart or the guts to do the things that Negan expected him to do. So it's kind of a godsend that he ended up escaping the way he did because honestly, if he didn't die in that herd, Negan would have probably ended up killing him because there's no way Greg would have followed through. But I just thought it was kind of weird that at that table, he really was that naive as to think that he could negotiate with Negan on some level. Dwight is treading a very thin line right now. I do not think he anticipating being trapped inside of Negan's compound the way he was. I mean, again, I think he had to know that at some point someone was gonna figure out that Rick and his crew must have insider information. Now, of course, it's to his advantage that they assume it's Eugene because obviously we know Eugene didn't come there by choice, but it's still a very, very dangerous place to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I there's a lot of people who are pretty pissed about this whole situation and of course, all of these lieutenants are scared that, you know, Negan's fist's gonna come their direction. So it's gonna be really cutthroat in an already very cutthroat environment. So I think Dwight really recognized in that moment how dangerous of a game he's playing. But uh, he did a really good job there in that moment, you know, deflecting, saying, you know, like, why are we worried about the workers? Let's just worry about getting out of here if Negan's actually dead and taking care of ourselves. You know, getting everyone kind of fighting amongst themselves about the best way to go next was a great way to take the focus, at least momentarily, off of how this all could have happened. So, unfortunately for Dwight, Negan didn't die. <laughs> I think he was kind of hoping maybe that it was true that Negan was gone, but, you know, he's going to have to navigate some very, very um, treacherous waters over the next little while until... Either someone gets ferreted out or, if, I mean, knowing Dwight, he'll probably try to frame somebody else if he can't frame Eugene. And I think he was going to frame Eugene, but then with that mo last uh, moment there where we saw that Eugene provided the, 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 ca the, what do you call them, the workers with guns, you know, Eugene was hoping for a revolution, a little riot, right? Because if that happened, if infighting happened, that gives Eugene his ample opportunity to potentially run away or... I guess his hope was probably that they would just kill each other and he'd be one of the last people standing and then he could somehow maybe return back to Rick and his group. But very interesting that now I think um, Eugene and uh, Dwight are gonna be working together. Let's, yeah, let's get into Negan. This was a very, this was probably the juiciest part of the episode for me. Uh, I, I like to write, I'm a writer and knowing like, I'm one of those people where, you know, I've talked a lot about both sides of this war and I've seen in my comments, which I love, thank you so much guys for, for commenting, that some people think that I'm defending Negan or saying that, you know, Negan and the Saviors are somehow, like, less culpable or, or anything like that. And I'm not, I'm not justifying Negan at all. I, I hope that's not what people are taking. 
he is by far the the worst option. <laughs> you know, between Rick and Megan, there's a clear, clear, clear winner there. Like Megan goes way too far. He does things that are absolutely despicable. My point to why I keep bringing these things up is because you know, as a writer, you learn that you know characters don't just do things. You know, Negan's not just a mustache twirling villain in a corner who's just like, oh, I just want to kill people for the fun. You know, I'm just here to be evil for the sake of being evil. There's a reason, there's a rhyme in his head at the very least as to why he does what he does and acts the way he does. And, you know, I've heard a perfect uh, saying that says that, you know, every villain is the hero of his own story, right? In Negan's mind, he thinks he's done the right thing or that he's doing the right thing. And I, I love that this episode finally allowed Negan to say in his way, in a way that wasn't full of, you know, the same bravado and arrogance and, um, you know, that grandstanding posturing he always does in front of his subjects. Like him and Gabe were just having a man-to-man -man talk at that moment and Negan realized he had no reason not to be real with Gabe. You know, Gabe is, that's one thing I'll say about Father Gabriel. and this has been ever since he's been on this show, even when he had his little moments of being you know, the Gabe that we all couldn't stand. Gabriel is a way of bringing, like, the truth out of people, you know, and that's obviously probably tied to his history as a priest, but he's, he's very good at being, letting people feel safe to tell him things that they probably wouldn't tell other people and to be open with uh, him. And so Negan got to have this real, this real moment of being really Negan with Gabriel. We needed somebody who could, who would make Negan feel safe enough to despair like to actually uh, tell these things, disclose these things, but do it in a way that was real. And I thought it was very intriguing to hear about like his, his viewpoint. We got to see where he's coming from. You know, we saw it in his speech to Gregory. He thinks that his kills are righteous because he thinks he kills the right people at the right time. Yes, sometimes they're innocent, but you know, in his mind, they needed killing. And that need might be in his mind to, to control the greater crowd, as he mentioned, or because that person, he, in his opinion, is not going to survive the world the way it is now. Um, you know, he's really convinced himself that these these killings, these murders, are for the sake of a greater picture that he's fighting for. And hearing the fact that he came in to the sanctuary, I'm assuming, and he wasn't the boss to begin with, which I kind of assumed as well. I didn't think he started the sanctuary. But to hear that he came in and... He saw whoever was in charge was not handling things well, and then he decided to just take over. It says a lot about Negan and the kind of person he is, and he brought up a really, really good point about how if he dies, way more people are going to die. And this is something that Rick hasn't really thought about yet, and I don't blame him. Obviously, Rick and his crew have their reasons for why they want Negan dead, but as it stands right now in the sanctuary, we all know that like Negan's rule is not based on respect like it is at the kingdom, for example. It's not based on people who um, necessarily like or feel a, a deep sense of loyalty to Negan. It's built on fear. You know, Negan has built, uh, you know, this system as screwed up as it is, it is a functional system. And we heard the workers say it today, you know, we work, we put up with all your garbage, in exchange, you keep us fed and clothed and, and the walkers away. That's all, you know, that's, that was the deal. So, of course, as soon as that looked like that was being threatened, we had a bunch of workers going, well, why the heck am I going to stay in line and put up with your crap if you're not holding up your end of the deal? But there's also the aspect that uh, Chris Hardwick brought up about two seasons ago on The Talking Dead about how Negan may be an asshole, but he's the king of the assholes. You know, we've already seen from last season that Negan's got men on his crew who would do some, you know, even more abom uh, abominable things than we've seen already. Uh, if he wasn't there, that fear of, you know, crossing him wasn't there. Like, he's keeping a lot of the absolute scum of the scum in that place from completely going rampant because they're scared of him. And I mean, I'm not saying again, I'm not saying Negan's a good person, but the reality is he is reigning in that terror to some degree because they fear him. But just some very interesting, very realistic points brought out about the sanctuary and Negan in this episode. And I think it's important that the show kind of explored it so that people can see that, like I said, he is a character, he does have dimensions. And I think the last thing that was huge was the admission that he was he once loved somebody. And this isn't really a big shock to me because the fact that Negan's one and only rule for the most part is never 
you know, do anything with a woman without her consent. Um, and how irritated he immediately became when Father Gabriel insinuated that maybe he was forcing these women to do something against their will. That ties back to typically having some sort of respect um, or love, you know, for women in some way. Now, of course, Negan is very broken. I'm not saying this is perfect by any stretch. We all know that he is, um, by the situation, forcing these women to be with him. But in his mind, he's kind of atoning. You know, the fact that he's doing this one little thing, to me, I think he's atoning for the fact that he was a shit husband, as he basically admitted, and that, you know, when she died, that guilt didn't allow him to do what he needed to do, which was not allow her to wander around as a walker. It's easy for us to just villainize him and not want to see that he might be actually a real human under there. And he is. You know, no villain acts without some sort of motivation and for him he honestly believes he's saving people like the saviors is not an ironic term to Negan he believes in it and kudos to Gabriel though uh, I didn't think he had it in him to talk Negan down to getting his guard down and then taking his gun that was something that Father Gabriel of like two seasons ago would not have had you know the courage to do you know old school Father Gabriel would have just been like well I'm screwed you know, I guess I'm just gonna start, you know, crying and sniveling, but you know, he just had the poise and he just went straight into disarming mode and the second he had his chance, he grabbed that gun. But um, he earned, it looks like he earned, um, he might have earned a little respect from Negan. So we'll see how that goes, uh, which kind of brings us into what the heck is wrong with Father Gabriel. It looks like the fever from a bite, but I'm trying to figure out when he would have been bitten, but I guess it could have happened when he was making his way to the trailer. It didn't look like he had been bitten, but I'm hoping we're not going to lose Father Gabe is my point. The fight, the fisticuffs between Daryl and Rick. Now, I said a couple, uh, I think a couple of um, reviews ago that Rick didn't really lay ground rules down for this war. Like, what are we doing? How are we proceeding? And it's causing tension within the ranks. And obviously, as we saw in, uh, not last episode, but the one before where Daryl, you know, killed Morales and then he killed that savior that gave himself up. Rick is not okay with this killing without, you know, indiscriminately per se. Uh, but Daryl is kind of, you know, he's fed up. He doesn't want to play nice anymore. And we saw him really mimic a lot of what you know, Negan was saying about how people just need killing. You know, it's just, it, it's justified if I say it is. So that little fight that they had was something that probably needed to happen, but I'm still not sure whether or not this means Daryl's on board with Rick's vision of not killing everybody. Um, as a side note though, big thumbs down to Daryl for just, just being like, oh, the kingdom's gone, so let's move on. Like that was so callous of him that that bothered me because those were his people. So that really made me sad. But all in all, guys, this is a really good episode. Again, kind of a canned, isolated episode away from the overall arc of the story. So what did you guys think of this episode? Do you agree that maybe Negan might be a multifaceted character that deserves a little bit more consideration? Or do you still feel like, nope, Negan needs to die. That's the end of it. Rick and his people will handle it. <laughs> And also, how do you feel about Daryl? Like, are you team Rick or are you team Daryl on this whole argument that the two of them are having about how to handle this war going forward? Leave your comments below with your hashtag and let me know. I'm really interested in seeing where you're coming from. If you really like this video, guys, go ahead and click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.